Hi, good morning and welcome to today's Products in Focus. So, you'll be able to see the most global markets are actually higher with the uh, US 30 actually almost breaking fresh all-time highs there. Uh, you can see that the tip of the candle uh, pretty much bang on this morning. The US market looking pretty buoyant uh, as uh, the US dollar has uh, reversed course. Uh, we had some decent data coming out of America yesterday over uh, on unemployment claims. Um, still not enough to uh, to support uh, that rate hike, and that's maybe part of the reason why the U.S. equity market have actually ticked up uh, because they think it's going to be good for their economy longer term. So, I think in reality they don't really want to raise rates in America because a stronger USD hurts their exports. So, uh, the markets are taking this this move as a as quite a positive. So, as long as unemployment claims continue to drop, and uh, a U.S. rate rate hike looks a little bit. Um, kind of less likely this year and into 2016 the US equity market should benefit from that uh, and obviously when it comes to, to earnings and whatnot, having a weaker dollar is going to be way better for, for them anyway so it looks to be as of for now that the US market has an opportunity there to break up that little bit higher so even if we do get weak economic data that's just a signal that interest rates are going to stay ultra low for an even longer period of time which will benefit um, US equities a little bit a little bit longer so a break above 18,284 would be a fresh all time high for the US 30 and that would be a technical breakout and that would uh, provide uh, a lot of other traders with an excuse to get involved in that market but it's not happened as of yet so jumping on to UK 100 everybody's talking about the European referendum will it be 2016 2017 they obviously don't want to they don't want to drag it out too far because uh, a lot of foreign investors might be holding off putting money into this country if there's still a big question mark over our EU passport, so to speak. So um, that's going to be causing a lot of uh, interesting moves in FX, but also for the UK 100. So I think if they're going to have a referendum in Europe, it's going to be sooner rather than later. Front page of Financial Times this morning have uh, a big story on it, so make sure you get a chance to cover that. This looks quite uh, top heavy, incidentally, from a, from a candlestick formation perspective, a series of lower highs. Um, but we are grinding a little bit higher. 69.64 is a potential support, but we look like we could be capped at 21 period moving average. And we are avoiding crossing the zero line in the MACD. So the UK 100 still has a little bit of life le left in it, but I think the real action is the US 30 at this stage. So looking at Japan 25, breaking above that 21 period SMA on its way to tackling 20,087. Uh, still bouncing off that uh, potential uptrend line. And we've got a bullish cross in the MACD just as the other technical indicators are neutral, but ticking upwards. Moving on to dollar yen, still bouncing around 119, not really that exciting as ever. Uh, but that 119 level has once again provided a support level, keeping dollar yen uh, on, on, the, on the upside. Uh, but against the sterling and the euro, the dollar is not really doing a huge amount. Uh, we'll come back to that in a second. So West Texas crude, uh, come off a bit. Um, just pretty much bang on <coughs> 59.50, looking at longer term potential resistance at 64 dollars. Um, that inability to break above the previous high, we're in about 61.66 however, is, uh, is going to cost crude a couple of um, extra cents heading into the weekend. Uh, as people begin to probably take some profits off the table there because it's had a good run up until now but with the trouble in Yemen and ISIS and Saudi Arabia still bombing across there there's still plenty of reasons to get excited uh, about West Texas um, and especially with uh, with OPEC still coming out with their um, projected demand forecast for 2015 to the end of 2015 uh, ramping up things still look pretty good for, uh, for West Texas going forward. So gold's really caning it just now. I had a great session there when US retail sales uh, really fizzled and failed to come to any fruition right there. Pushed up even higher again yesterday off the session highs though, but on the right side of potential resistance at 12.18. Every bit of economic data that comes out that's weak just adds more fuel to buy gold um, because it's a great um, <clears throat> it's a great hedge against, uh, against any interest rate hike. Uh, or the fact that it's not coming. So if you really believe that interest rates are not going to be rising in 2015, a lot of guys are um, selling dollar and buying gold. And um, because obviously it's, it's historically relatively low, obviously it's been much lower, it would be much nicer to have at 11.86, but uh, as long as it keeps its head above 12.18 uh, and the economic data still comes out a little bit middling, which it has done for a long time, gold could benefit from that. So finishing up with Euro-Dollar and GBP-USD, so Euro-Dollar pushing up higher, 
one spot 1642 is the next potential support you can see here one spot 1388 was the tip of the candle there from the very start of april uh, may sorry <clears throat> We're breaking above that yesterday, pushing a little bit higher this morning. The technical indicators were all massively overbought, but there is a bit of momentum behind this, and it's a fundamental factor that fundamental factors that are driving it rather than a technical perspective right now. Uh, but we'll see how things pan out with that. Um, and there's not a huge amount of economic data today either. And I don't believe there's much on Monday. Uh, it's not until Tuesday till we get something happening. So sterling still smashing it. News about sterling still remains. If the UK leaves the eurozone and the referendum. And importers, exporters, etc. will have to buy a lot more sterling to do business with um, with Britain, and that's why you're seeing these huge moves in, uh, in, in in cable. It's not because we're going to be raising rates anytime soon or anything else like that. It's purely a play on that on that referendum factor, and the market is obviously thinking that there's a very good possibility that um, it could go down to the wire, and that's why you're seeing these big moves right here. So one spot 59 is next potential resistance, but this is a very very strong break of this downwards trend line right now. Uh, pretty exciting when you look at it from a technical perspective. So I can date wise as I said, there's not much today. You've got University of Michigan consumer sentiment um, due today. Monday, nothing. Tuesday, a lot more. UK PPI, Eurozone CPI, uh, and, Z and the ZEW business report. And then Wednesday, um, more PPI, Bank of England NPC minutes, and of course, crude oil inventories. Crude oil Wednesday, after all. So as ever, um, keep your eye on the chart forum. Some real cool trade setups here from our global analyst team. Make insights part of your layout to get the inside track of what's moving in the markets. And join me again on Monday to find out what happened next.